Okay, hello everyone. I'm a PhD student at the Department of Archaeology at the University of Turku in Finland. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what kind of similarities and what kind of differences I have noticed in the Finnish material compared to what I know of the material here in the UK. And uh, on the picture, uh, on the slide, there's uh, the two feet of a hair, or actually just the bones. And these were found in opposite corners of a 17th century hot structure in, in Turku. And this is the find that actually made me interested in this topic. I was the one who found them when I was digging at the excavation. And uh, my thesis uh, concerns uh, objects concealed in buildings, or these hidden charms, uh, in historical times in Finland. And I'm using this kind of multi-source perspective where I use uh, many different kind of uh, source types to, to get a fuller picture of uh, what these uh, traditions have looked like. And the titles here on the slide. And uh, the manuscript is now in pre-examination, and we have this two-staged process of reviewing a PhD thesis. Uh, it ends with the public defense. And if everything goes according to plan, I'll defend mine in August or September. And as I said, there, was, uh, there are many types of sources, but two of the sources are, are the main types. And this is the factual finds of concealed objects in buildings, and then there are uh, folklore accounts about these customs of concealing something in the building. And I'm using a contextual method where I recognize and interpret patterns in the relationship between chosen object, its location, and the meaning of the act. And before moving on you know, to the materials of my study, I thought that a quick reminder about uh, Finland would be in its place. It's a kind of a Scandinavian country, even though we don't count it to belong to Scandinavia. This is, of course, no difference to you, but very important to Finns. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the area belonged to the Swedish kingdom from medieval times up to the early 19th century, so there are a lot of shared elements there. And uh, Turku is in the southwestern corner of the, of the country. It's the oldest town there. Uh, nature is dominated by boreal coniferous forest and numerous lakes. And en environmental conditions are a bit harsh. So agriculture was up to the early 20th century supported by small-scale small hunting and fishing. It actually was snowing when I left yesterday. So, <laughs> so it's a bit, a bit more. And since I'm talking about hidden charms in buildings, I, I chose to show you a picture of the most common type of building during most of the historical period in Finland. And this kind of simple log, ho log, log houses have fewer options uh, where to put a hidden charm than more complex structures. And uh, even since there are fewer options, I think that the main the general idea is kind of similar, the, the areas are similar, but there are fewer, fewer spaces. And uh, the type on the picture is called the smoke cottage because it does not have a chimney. And the smoke was just let out uh, through an opening in the, uh, in the wall and it was, there was a small hatch there. They wanted to keep the smoke in since it was warm. And uh, log houses with chimneys become popular also in the 18th and 19th centuries. So, so those, also those, especially in, in towns. Okay, so the folklore accounts actually form the larger of uh, my two main materials. And I have found 775 accounts describing hidden charms in buildings in the folklore archives in Helsinki. And here's uh, on the slide is one example that shows you what they look like. <coughs> a small bottle with quicksilver has been kept inside or under the threshold of a stable or a cow shed for a witch cannot cross such a threshold. And uh, they typically tell uh, what was concealed, where in the building, and which type of building is in question, and, and the best ones also tell why. <coughs> 
And these uh, accounts, they date mostly to the late 19th century and early 20th century. So they describe the customs of that period. I decided to look at these uh, similarities and differences uh, in the light of uh, the objects that were chosen to, to be hidden. And there might be, of course, other aspects in these uh, similarities and differences if, if I looked at other aspects as well, but, but this was what I chose. And here on the slide are the objects that uh, were described in the folklore accounts. And if you're wondering why the total you know, on this uh, graph <coughs> is more than, than the total of the accounts, it's because some of the accounts tell of, the sim of uh, multiple objects. As you can see, there are three main, uh, three types of objects that stand out. It's mercury, coins, and animal remains. And the mercury is often described as being uh, put inside a small bottle or the quill of a bird and concealed under or inside a threshold, as was in the example I showed you earlier. And coins, I understood, are also concealed here in the UK as well, but they are not so often discussed as, as shoes, cats, and horse skulls. Um, the most commonly occurring animal remain is the horse skull, so you find, find a similarity there. Uh, and cats, however, are mentioned only in six accounts, and it seems that uh, they were not as popular in Finland as over here. And similarly, <coughs> shoes are mentioned in only two accounts. And of human-made objects, there's a sharp metal tools that stand out, and I think we have another similarity there. Since horse skulls are well known in both the UK and Finnish folklore, I'll tell you something about them. Uh, on the slide is a very typical example of the folklore about these objects. When building a hearth in a new home, one should hide a horse skull in the foundation. Then cockroaches will not come to this building. And actually the graph there shows uh, how I have been working with these materials. Here I have looked at the context of animal remains in the folklore, and I have emphasized the horse skulls here. As you can see, most horse skulls are hidden in, in hard structures, but some could be found in walls and floors as well, uh, under walls and floors. I understand that this pattern is kind of similar in the UK, but actually there are no, no accounts telling about any acoustic uh, meaning for the horse skulls in Finland. It's actually, the most common is kind of pest control uh, idea. They usually are supposed to keep cockroaches, fleas, bedbugs, and rats outside the building. And it's also uh, clear that they usually don't they don't kill a horse for this practice. They they use the skull of a horse that had died previously, and they usually kept the skull when the horse died. <coughs> okay, so that was the picture uh, shown by the 19th century folklore. Let's see what they actually uh, found hidden objects tell. Uh, this material is smaller than the folklore, and this is emphasized by the fact that the finds are from a wider time, time span of 800 years. On the slide are pictures of a split skull of a cow that was found during archaeological excavation in Turku. And there was a cellar that dating to the 17th century, and in one corner under the brick floor, this skull had been placed on top of a stone. And since the folklore date from the 19th century, I decided to show you what kind of objects occur in the fine material from roughly the same time period. And this graph shows objects that were concealed between the 18th century and mid 20th century. Uh, you can immediately see that this picture is quite different from the folklore, even though they are contemporary. The three most common types of objects in the folklore were mercury coins and animal remains. And here we see human made artifacts and especially Stone Age objects, so called uh, thunderbolts. And this difference is caused by the interests of museums. 
Finds of Stone Age objects and other interesting artifacts have been recorded with accuracy, while many other types of objects have not been of interest. For example, there are no finds of horse skulls from this period. But I have heard that in some areas finding a horse skull in an old heart when demolishing it is very common. Uh, and it seems that it's maybe a little bit too common because uh, people do not think that is something they could report to a museum. And I find it maybe more surprising that horse skulls of this period have not been found on archaeological excavations either, but this might be a co coincidence. There is one horse skull from a 17th century context in my material, but that one is so far the only reliable reported find. There, were, there are several cow skulls though, and actually also two whole skeletons of horses, which are immediately so much more outstanding that the days have been rec yeah. recorded and documented. So it's uh, quite obvious that folklore and finds com uh, complement each other since they show the practices from different viewpoints. Uh, as mentioned, the folklore also tells uh, about why the objects were hidden. And here I think that the main meaning of protection against evil is quite similar as here in the UK. And these hidden charms were especially supposed to protect against witchcraft. And then there's a more general wish for good luck, is the second most common meaning. And then repelling pests. That was mentioned to be the main purpose of concealed horse skulls, for example. And other reasons are less outstanding here. And as you can see, there's some accounts that describe counter magic against witchcraft that has already occurred. And I guess the best known example of this kind of practices are the witch, witch bottles here. But we don't have any witch bottles in, in Finnish traditions <laughs> at all. Instead, we have another practice that has been used when misfortune was suspected to be the result of witchcraft. <coughs> uh, the remains of rituals, including the burial of a miniature, circa 15 to 20 centimeter long uh, <coughs> coffin with a frog or other small animal inside, have been found in several Finnish churches where they have been concealed on the floor or in other structures. The oldest known example was found in the Turku Cathedral and it has been dated to the end of the 17th century and it's the elaborately made one at the bottom. And uh, the other finds date to the late 18th and the 19th century. So we're talking about practices that have been alive up to the 19th, late 19th century. And there's been up to 100 individual coffins that have been actually discovered, but only nine of these have been preserved. And it's because they were found <coughs> in the late 19th and early 20th century when they were not considered worth keeping. <coughs> and these practices are also well known in, in Finnish folklore, recorded in the late 19th century. And actually in the folklore, the burial place is not always a church but uh, this, they have only been found in churches. They probably have decomposed in other, other contexts. The folklore explains that these coffins have been part of counter magic against witchcraft. When some misfortune was believed to be caused by a witch, the ritual was performed in order to reverse the effect and punish the witch. And this ritual was often very detailed and it involved a lot of ritual treatment. For example, the frog uh, should be caught without to uh, touching it with bare hands. It was bound or impaled before burying it in the coffin. And this picture has been taken of one of the preserved finds shortly after it was brought to the National Museum in Helsinki. <coughs> it seems that the mouth of the frog has been stitched shut and then the frog has been impaled by, a needle, by the needle. And the folklore also tells that something of the victim of the, of the witchcraft should be put inside the coffin with the frog and sometimes even in its mouth. So perhaps this was the case here. And uh, these burials also seem to include uh, some textile that has been put as a shroud for the frog. And uh, the Finnish folklore is also very, very uh, 
there is described this, uh, this belief in witchcraft that is usually it's someone who lives close by, it's a neighbor that is uh, feared to be the witch. But uh, these uh, frog coffin rituals could be made also when you didn't know who that neighbor would be because this would always target the, the witch who was responsible. As noted, there are two folklore accounts that describe concealing a shoe. One explains that the worn shoe together with a horse with horse bone and a tar pot will repel pests when hidden in, in the heart structure. <coughs> and the other gives the same purpose for to a worn shoe hidden together with cattle bones in the heart. So it's a little bit different here in the UK. And we have two finds of concealed shoes in attic structures that resemble the traditions known here very much though. And these are both found in towns, in contrast to the folklore which was recorded in rural areas. The most intriguing example is the one I put on this slide. Uh, Ralph Merrifield mentioned in, in his Archaeology of Ritual and Magic that the concealed shoes index of the Northampton Museum includes finds from Finland. So I contacted the museum to find out what, the, what they had. And they kindly told me that this, uh, the, it's this one find. Uh, a woman's black leather ten button boot made about 1910, found in the roof and reported in May 1985. So next I contacted the Helsinki City Museum to ask for more information. And I think this was quite exciting. The shoe was found during renovation of the old wooden main building of Meilahti Manor in 1983. The building was built in the early 19th century, but during 1905 to 1945, the Eston estate was owned by the British Campbell family. And uh, the attic of the building was renovated in 1913, and this is the time when the boot was most likely concealed. So the Campbells must have been the concealers. Uh, concealing whole cats in buildings are mentioned in folklore in five accounts. And these are all done in, for malignant purposes, to destroy the luck of others. Usually you would bury a dead or kill, actually kill a cat and then bury it under someone's building. Uh, we have one certain find of a concealed cat. It was found inside a miniature coffin in the attic structures of a church. And this kind of concealment is also known in the folklore about counter, counter witchcraft against uh, counter magic against witchcraft, only that the cat coffin is mentioned to have been buried at the graveyard, but graveyard, graveyard and church is quite similar. Very recently another possible find came to my attention. I was contacted when two cat mummies and some shoes actually were found in the crawl space under the floor of the Naval Academy in Helsinki. <coughs> the building was built by the Russians in 1830. And this space could theoretically have been accessible for the cats to get trapped there, so this is not a certain case. And I thought that maybe some of uh, the people here are more experienced with these finds and could give me some, some insight on, on how this looks on the, on the pictures here. I actually don't know if uh, the Russians have known this concealed cats tradition at all. Yes. They have. Here's uh, another picture where the bolt cats are, are visible. The one in the barrel is better preserved, while the other in the front is mostly just bones. <coughs> and then maybe we can discuss them more later. Later, I would be happy for any comments about them. So, to conclude, there is evidence of both similarities and differences between the traditions here and in Finland. And similarities are the use of coins, sharp metal tools, and horse skulls. And especially the main purpose to protect against evil influences, mainly witchcraft. And things that are different include the lack of witch bottles for traditional frogs in miniature coffins in its place, the rarity of concealed shoes and perhaps also of cats, I think that the picture of cats might be partly due to issues with, doc with doc documentation, but this is uncertain for now. Mm -hmm. Basically, it seems that the idea is similar, but the chosen objects and practices differ a little bit. 
I also wanted to ask you a few questions about hidden charms here in the UK. First, uh, do you have evidence of repelling pests with the help of hidden charms? I know that the cats have been sometimes mentioned, uh, maybe be in, for this reason it would be very logical, but do you have any folklore about it or, or something like that? No? Okay. And also, do you have evidence of concealing markers? And you can comment on this now or later during the evening. It would be great to have here any insights. Thank you. So just uh, in the Edinburgh National Museum, there are a number of miniature coffins which are found on the uh, Hill above there, but they contain human puppets in them. Do you know those? Yes, yeah. I have. Do, do, are, are there any parallels in Finland at all? Well, yes, we also have uh, puppets inside the coffins. Uh, they are made of, out of alder sticks. Out of? Alder wood. Old wood, yeah. yeah. But uh, those are also, uh, well, they, they are not always. Uh, magic against witchcraft, but it could also be magic against something that has uh, uh, transmitted from nature, and the uh, puppet is kind of uh, representing the forest or something like that. But I think it's, it might be a little bit different. Yeah. The, the human uh, bones that were found, was there any pattern in those at all? You said there were human remains found. Yeah, there were so few of them, so it, it's kind of hard to, to know a pattern. But uh, it's kind of similar with the animal bones. It's, it's uh, bones from the head or, or from the hands. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, many, many decades ago, I read a book about uh, nuns walled, was it women, walled up and walled up women or something. It was a double barreled title about women being <coughs> immured because they were pregnant or something. They'd gone off the rails. Um, so has anyone ever found women Actually, or, or human skeletons? We, um, we've got a, a story of a woman who was walled up in the um, castle. Not Norwich Castle? No, no, in Newark. In the Newark Castle. Castle. Yeah, yeah, yes. the woman who was found yeah. between the wall cavities um, when it was excavated. Yeah. Nobody knows why she was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's another story in uh, Albania, which the castle being founded on uh, a woman uh, being walled up by her husband. There's a lot of people who have the time for it, yeah. <laughs> It, it, it's a ballad sequence, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Um, Alan, Alan Dundee is the walled up wife. Yeah. Yeah. records uh, of things that have been found when they have been disassembled. Right. And so it's putting together a whole different uh, building yes. 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 And also these buildings are, they are mobile. Right. You could right. take it apart and, and put it okay. together in another place. With its concealed objects. Yeah. Yes, there, there's talk about it that you needed to take what was concealed and, and concealed in the new place as well. Oh, you. you mentioned, am I right, I heard you mention that some of the log cabin didn't have chimneys because they kept the smoke in for the warmth. Yes. yes. But when did they start having, you know, is there a sort of time in buildings when the chimneys started to appear? Well, they start to appear in the 17th century, but they become uh, popular <coughs> in the 19th century. 
But is there any evidence of the sort of um, protection marks around the chimney that we would find in the UK? Did they try to sort of defend that entry into the building? No, I don't think there is. We have protection <coughs> marks around the doorways and windows, but, mm -hmm. but I think the chimney is <coughs> so new that it, it didn't have like. <laughs> Yeah. Um, one thing that struck me in Brian Hogger's talk was that it was all about averting malign influences, but you talked about good luck and also about attracting wealth. Um, so I wondered, was it actually different objects and processes that were used for luck and for averting evil influences? Not completely. There's a little bit of... Uh, but you can see that some objects were, were more often used for luck and some were more often for, for uh, apotropraic practices. Uh, for example, coins were very often for, for luck. And uh, I think it, probably the older reason for that, it doesn't show so much anymore in the 19th century, but it was connected with this guardian spirit of the house that you would give uh, offerings to and it would uh, take care of the luck of the building, also the wealth of the building that was connected with luck. Some of the shoes are for luck or something like that. Um, when I've had a, a small child's shoe, about first walking size, uh, it had been found in the wall of a house. And um, when I asked which room, it was the master bedroom where mum and dad slept. And I thought, oh, that wasn't to frighten the witches away or anything like that. That was for totally up the opposite, mm. for bringing something into the house. Yes. But, and, uh, and that's not the only example. There were other examples of shoes being to bring good luck rather than mm. anything else. Mentioned um, that there were protective marks around the windows and doors. What sort of marks were they? Uh, this kind of geometric um, pentagrams are very, very common with other kinds of geometric geometric signs, crosses, and. Yeah. The other thing that struck me about your coffins was well, they were very much presumably like coffins for human beings. Yes. yes. And the frog is on that shape. <laughs> no, no the, actually, they, <coughs> some of the folklore tells about the, the frog that it was uh, thought to be very closely related to humans. And I think it might be something with its paws. They are kind of hand like. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, that's maybe one reason. The other animal is squirrel, squirrel that they used to put in the coffin, and it also has small hands. So there might be some connection there. But also the, the ritual when they would take the coffin to the church is also it also followed the ritual of a human burial, but you couldn't say all of the parts of the prayers. <coughs> it's like some some parts would be left out. We had one example of a wooden building in Switzerland, um, but it was too layers of wood and uh, two level, vertical levels of wood. And between the two, it was stuffed solid with children's toys and the odd shoe or two. And somebody had suggested it was for warmth. And I thought, no, there's no warmth in children's toys or all shoes for that matter. Yes. So very strange. Yours are just single. Are they, are they circular logs still? I've forgotten it so long I went to swim. It looks as though they might be flat um, boards. Mm. And it's time to give room for the next speaker. Thank you very much.